not today. Uh-uh. Don't do that. So I should roll out right behind him here pretty soon. There he is. Yep, so I'm in offensive position. I've got a heater called up. Let's just say I get clearance to shoot this guy. Okay, he is hostile. He's got a hostile act. Fox 2. We've got a hit. Things just got real. Hopefully that didn't start World War III. Here we go. Welcome to the channel, my friends. We're going to talk today about Russian aircraft approaching America and also approaching Poland. We'll start with the American scenario up in Alaska. Some Russian aircraft were recently intercepted and the same thing happened in Poland right around the same time. We're gonna break down both of those. The Poland one's gonna happen during the bonus round, so definitely stay to the end of the video for that. And I'll give you some highlights on an actual Russian intercept that I'm gonna do for you, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to stay to the end of the video for that. Let's dive in. On February 13th, 2023, Russian aircraft approached the Alaskan ADIS, which is the Air Defense Identification Zone. The aircraft were two Tu-95 Bear bombers and two Su-30s or Su-35. At the end of the day, these were coming in to test American responses. They entered and operated within the Alaskan Air Defense Identification Zone. They were intercepted by two NORAD F-16s, which are on station extremely rapidly, showing the Russians that, hey, there's no free flights through here, my friend. And just to give you some background on this, this type of incursion happens seven to 10 times a year. So NORAD actually sees this as routine operation from the Russians saying, you know, hey, we're here, don't forget about us. NORAD's constantly monitoring a flight path of Russian aircraft that are approaching American airspace. So Ryan, why does Russia do these intercepts? Ah, such a good question. I'm so glad you asked. And to give you perspective, I'm gonna tell you about an intercept that happened July 4th, 2015. Russian aircraft approached the air defense identification zone in Alaska, just like they recently did. When the Russian aircraft approached the air defense identification zone in Alaska, they came up on the guard frequency, which is an emergency frequency, and they said, good morning, American pilots. We're here to greet you on the 4th of July, Independence Day. And so as you can see, it's kind of all about asserting dominance, right? It's all about flexing. On the same day, Vladimir Putin actually called President Barack Obama and wished him a happy Independence Day. Russia is basically saying, see, we're still a world military power and we're a force to be reckoned with. That's the message that they're trying to get across. And I guess it could be potentially destabilizing, right? Because the Tu-95 bomber is a nuclear capable bomber. So lots of American politicians have said this is a destabilizing act. So what's the gain for Russia to do this? Well, there's not really a great deal to gain, except again, flexing their muscle and saying, hey, look at us, we're still here. Vladimir Putin's like, not only do I ride horses, I'll also fly my bear bomber towards your airspace. So let's talk about how Russia does it and maybe some critiques of how they do these provocative acts. What they like to do is fly towards the air defense identification zone without a transponder on. So without squawking any information, telling anyone that they're there. So the primary way to see them is just from ground-based radars, which will then alert the fighters who go up and intercept them. But this is relatively unsafe because if you have civilian air traffic in and around the area, a lot of the deconfliction with civilian air traffic uses squawks and transponder codes. So the fact that they're not doing that, it's just a little bit flamboyant. Anytime you have aircraft coming together from two different nations that aren't on the same radio frequency flying at extremely high speeds, obviously it can be dangerous. There's risks involved with doing that. You're going into an intercept where you can't talk to the aircraft, so you aren't going into a predictable scenario. And a predictable scenario rejoins on friendly fighters are challenging enough. So then you throw into the mix that this fighter might be maneuvering erratically, which Russian pilots have been claimed to be doing. I think it's probably a lack of vodka. They need more vodka shots. They'd probably fly a lot better. And to highlight this, in 2001, a US Navy surveillance aircraft and a Chinese fighter actually collided during an intercept, just like the ones that I'm talking about, over Henan Island in the South China Sea. The damaged US plane managed to make an emergency landing. The Chinese aircraft crashed and its pilot was killed. The Chinese blamed the United States and stranded the US crew in that area for an entire week before they were allowed to leave. As you can see, these types of intercepts can be incredibly dangerous, especially when you get into a you-know-what measuring contest. It's more of a symbolic 
act to send a message that, hey, we're still here, we're up here, don't forget about us, we're important, we're a military power, we got it, Russia, we see you, you've been in the gym working out a little bit, but you're not going down far enough on your triceps, you need to do better there. But rest assured, these Russian aircraft are tracked even while they're in Russian airspace, so we know well in advance when they're coming in, and that's why we're able to get fighters on station so quickly. During the Cold War, these intercepts were extremely common. They slowed down for a while, but now they're definitely picking back up, and Russia's kind of saying like, hey, eagle, you know, they're poking the eagle, they're like, hey, we know you're sending lots of money, lots of weapons to Ukraine, and we don't like that, so we're gonna come up and start poking the eagle again. So when tensions start to rise, it seems like these intercepts start to increase as well as a symbolic gesture of, hey, you should be afraid, is essentially what Russia wants. It's kind of like the bully on the playground who's trying to push us around. All right, you made it to the bonus round of the video, and your reward is we are gonna talk about that intercept that happened close to Polish airspace where F-35s intercepted Russian aircraft. The F-35s intercepted the aircraft and escorted them out. The interesting thing though is what type of Russian aircraft they actually encountered. They encountered a Russian IL-20M ELINT reconnaissance aircraft. ELINT stands for electronic intelligence. It's information derived primarily from electronic signals that do not contain speech or text. Along with that ELINT collecting aircraft, were two Su-27 flankers. Ah, I'd love to dogfight one of those. Hmm, maybe I will. The Netherlands Defense Ministry said that eight Dutch F-35s are stationed in Poland for February and March for now, and that could be extended. And those were the aircraft that were on alert that went up and intercepted this Russian package. Ultimately, it's awesome that those F-35s were there from the Netherlands. I think it's good to just stand up and say, hey, Russia, you're not gonna push around NATO. We're here to stand up and protect each other. So stop it, Russia, stop. <laughs> They're not gonna stop and that's okay. The key here is just to create deterrence so that Russia knows they can't push around NATO and the United States. Even when they try to poke the eagle, we just gotta stand up and say, not gonna happen. All right, here we are. We're gonna simulate that we are about to intercept this Russian fighter out over the Alaskan Air Defense Identification Zone. I'm in an F-16 Viper. My goal is to intercept this Russian aircraft, try to reach them on some sort of emergency frequency, tell them to leave, but ultimately just maintain an offensive posture. Sometimes they wanna poke the eagle. Eagle's gotta poke back. Now I'm trying to get a lock on him just to be like, hey, I'm here. Don't forget that you can't just fly through this airspace. Now I'm bleeding off energy not to overshoot. And then he's gonna go into the vertical. I got a good lock on him. I'm gonna stay up high for a second and then rotate in behind him and say like, hey man, not today. Uh-uh, don't do that. So I should roll out right behind him here pretty soon. There he is. Yep, so I'm in offensive position. I've got a heater called up. Let's just say I get clearance to shoot this guy. Okay, he is hostile. He's got a hostile act. Fox 2. We've got a hit. Things just got real. Hopefully that didn't start World War III. And there he goes. Looks like the pilot got out. That's good. And now I'm gonna get, a, I'll get away from the fireball. But I'm patrolling my airspace. I'm in my ADIS, so it's like, you're in my house. <laughs> no, no coming into my house. Tally, I got Tally 1 aircraft, high. Trying to grab a lock on him. Okay, got another good lock. Now we're gonna know this one's hostile. I'm gonna ease off, and then that looks like a Su-35 to me. This is not gonna be an easy fight. This aircraft is not gonna give up ground easy. They're gonna be able to outmaneuver me. Trying to see if I can get an offensive position on this aircraft. Yep, there he is. Let's say he's hostile as well. I've got clearance to fire. He's over the ADIS. Fox 2. Ah, the Fox 2's gonna miss. So thanks so much for checking out that breakdown of intercepting a Russian aircraft over the air defense identification zone. Obviously, that would be an intense scenario if you actually got into a dogfight. The goal would be to avoid that dogfight. Thanks so much for being here, my friends. Really appreciate you checking out this video. The best compliment you can give me is just watch another video. I've got a video that came out about the Sidewinder missing the unknown aircraft under Lake Huron. That'll pop up here. And then YouTube's gonna hit you with the video that they think is best for you. I encourage you, make your own decision. I know you will, and I know you'll make a good one. Thank you so much for being here. We'll catch you on the next video. Most of all, have a great day.